As you're working in 90 Second Website Builder, you'll be dealing with a lot of different objects and elements and components for your website. And each one of these objects and components all have properties or settings that you can configure and change depending on the element you're working with. For example, I've got three elements here on my canvas, an image, a video, and a text object that contains some random text. The most common way to access the properties or the settings for a particular object is to just simply double click on it. So for the image, for example, if I double click on it, it brings up the object's properties where I can configure things about this object. Since this is an image, these properties are specific to images. For example, I can decide which image this should be. By using this path, I can open up the image I want to use from my computer. But there are a lot of different settings in the properties. And again, for an image, it will have unique things like reflection, um, transparency, and opacity. I can add borders. I can add alt text and add a title for search engine optimization purposes. I can create a link for this image so when people click on it, it goes somewhere. I can add special effects that are unique to images, watermarks, events, etc. So these are the properties for an image object. If I double click on the YouTube video, I'll also bring up the properties. Of course, they're unique to a YouTube video where I can set things like loop the video, play in high quality mode, autoplay it, etc. These are unique to the YouTube objects. So this is true for just about everything in 90 Second Website Builder. And in most cases, you can just double click on an object and get to its properties. But there are other ways. So for example, with a text object, you wouldn't normally double click on it to do that because text is unique. Clicking on it once allows us to select the object, just like we did here. When we click on the image, it's selected. Double clicking on it opens up the properties. But for text, it's different. Clicking on it once does select it, but when we double click on text, we go into edit mode so we can actually go in here and change this text. So then how would we get to the object properties for a text object? Well, we would use one of the other methods, and that is to right click on the object and simply go to object properties. And it brings up this kind of a window where we can affect the text and adjust its properties or configure it uniquely for text. Here we can change its style. We can add a box shadow and backgrounds and things like that and the things that would apply to text. So by right clicking on an object, it's another way to get to the properties. That's true for this too. I can right click on the image and go to object properties. And again, I can right click on the video and go down here. It's off the screen, but it's object properties is in that context. So that's how you would get to, that's a couple of different ways to get to the properties of a particular object. But there's another way, and this is useful for a lot of different things. I'm gonna show you an example. If you look in the bottom corner of your workspace, in my case, I have this palette always showing, and you can again turn this on and off. I recommend you keep this open. But this is the Properties Inspector palette, and it's gonna always be showing the properties of something. That something is gonna be whatever happens to be selected. Right now, I have a YouTube video selected, and so this palette is showing me the properties of that YouTube object. If we bring the text object in here, you'll notice, because this is selected, I'm now looking at the properties of this text object. What's good about the Properties Inspector, and let me open it up a little bit wider here so you can see, it actually has some parameters that I can change here that I can't do elsewhere. One of those, and the ones that I use the most in the Properties Inspector, is this position and size. Sometimes when you're working with intricate spacing, you want to be able to move an object, maybe just one pixel. And that's not always easy to do just by dragging it. As you can see, as I move this object, look at the position in the Properties Inspector palette. It's adjusting because it's reflecting what I'm doing in the position of this object. But sometimes if I wanted this object to move just one pixel and I don't have a steady hand, it's hard to do. So if I wanted this object to be at the position 778, all I'd have to do is go here and simply change that number and it will move the object one pixel. Now this is when you really want to get detailed and you really want to get specific about where your objects are. You'll find it, it, it can be very, very helpful in positioning things. The same is true for dimensions. So if you wanted your video to be a, a particular size, you can of course adjust it with your mouse. But if you find that difficult to do, you might use this to get the exact dimension that you want instead by simply typing it in 
and then it would adjust it out on the screen as well. The point is there's a number of ways to get to the properties of objects either by double clicking on them, right clicking on them, or using the properties inspector. Another thing you should know is when there's no object selected, like right now there's an image selected, now there's a video, and now the text. If there's no object selected, I've unselected all of these, you'll see that the properties inspector is now showing me the properties of the page because the page in and of itself is also an element of my website. And so now I'm looking at the settings for my page. This is one way to do it. And again, there's a lot of things that are unique to the page that I can do here. And the other way to get the, to the page properties, again, is to right click on an empty part of the canvas and go to the page properties. And that would do the same thing. So there you have it. Page properties is a very important part of the web design process. And it's good to know that you can get to those properties for just about anything you can find in 90 Second Website Builder, and you can get to them in multiple ways and very easily. So as you find your way around the software, you're going to find that the Properties Inspector Palette is a really great help as you're building websites in 90 Second Website Builder.